Familia, hello, hello. I am back from Vegas, you guys. I went to Vegas and it will all be in the vlog. I cannot wait for you to see it. The vlog will be up this Saturday, July 15th. So I'm super excited. Oh, hello, if you're new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Magda and Janet. Welcome to the fam. Please don't forget to like and subscribe because we're always here having a good time and come visit me on TikTok and Instagram because I'm there daily. And of course, welcome back to my all the goodies. I took two days off of filming and I'm ready. And this is a video you guys have been wanting to see. I did it last year. I'm gonna do a new version this year so you guys have it for reference. Especially, I just got back from Vegas and it was so hot, like hot. LA is not there yet, but it will eventually. You guys know I have oily skin. Oils tend to break down makeup. Therefore, I really have honed in on making our makeup last all day long. You guys know I do 12 hour wear test and all that jazz. So I feel like right now is an appropriate time to do this video. You first want to start with skincare. Whatever skincare you have, make sure you're at least moisturizing, putting a good eye cream on, and sunscreen if you wear sunscreen. I did do my full skincare, my evening and morning skincare routine. I will link that video down here for you. Now it's ready. You always want to let your skincare dry down. At this point, I did my eye makeup, so I, it's been on for like 30 minutes. When I say skincare is ready, that means I have my moisturizer on, my eye cream, my sunscreen all that that's here right you next want to move on with a primer i believe you need primer because a primer really holds your makeup on longer if you're not gonna wear your makeup for too long maybe five hours six hours you can get away with not using a primer but if it's a long wear you want to use a primer that's gonna help adhere the makeup to your face i like to double prime that means to use two primers because i have oily skin i like to go in with a mattified primer and a sticky primer. You can go in with the pore filling and a sticky. You can go with the matte and a pore filling. You can mix and match however you'd like. Most primers are silicone based primers and most foundations are silicone based foundations. The idea is to match silicone based foundation with the silicone based primer, a water based primer with a water based foundation. There is a lot of foundations that are not water based. Most of them are silicone based. So that rule to me, it doesn't really apply because I always mix this with every foundation and I never really have separation. It really depends on how you apply. It depends how your skin chemistry is too. Sometimes your skin will just break up certain product and not work to try out what works for you. For example, I know both of these will work like a charm. So this is what we're gonna use today. You guys, today is a teaching video. So I'm like, I'm gonna be talking a lot because I really wanna explain to you more the technique and the reasoning why I'm doing these things as the pose to the actual product you can use the products you already have I want more of an understanding on why I do the things I do and here we are so this is our Mac mattifying primer this one I like to concentrate it ooh, away from my eyeballs right here in the center and right here this is where I get oily is this is where my pores is this is where I have texture this will kind of flatten that area up I think I put too much but you don't need to put as much as I did but I kind of be extra sometimes okay you're gonna let this dry down. I know some of you are like, I don't got all that time, but make time. It'll take a minute or two, so I'm gonna let this dry down. Hey, it's been, I don't know, two minutes. We're nice and dried down. We're gonna go in with our next primer. This is a sticky primer, the e.l.f. powder, powder, power grip. It literally will stick your makeup down. I like to add it in the perimeter of the face right here right here right here I like to add a good amount and again you want to let this really dry down it gets that stickiness I mean you see it's sticky right now but give it like a minute this one doesn't need too much time but it does apply wet you don't want to put your foundation on super wet skin so here we as you know, or if you may not know, always mix your foundation. Something about a mixture just gives you such a beautiful coverage. It becomes more pigmented. It blurs more. Most of the foundations will kind of combine on what they do. So if you use a blurring foundation and a matte foundation, let's say, you'll have a mattified blurred base. Do something for an event or long wear, or I'm going to be in the sun or something. You know I'm mixing. I love these two foundations. I think these are just holy grail foundations. I love the new Smashbox one. 
Smashbox one. I definitely think this is a sweat proof foundation. It depends on foundations like Estee Lauder Double Wear. That's another holy grail. There's so many foundations that work well, especially for your skin type. So you know what works well and you're going to mix it with something else you know works well. So this gives you a hydrating look with good coverage. This gives you a mattified look with good coverage. To me, it's best of both worlds. Always shake your foundation. If you're like, wait, I'm a little too oily, like I need more help. This is an optional step. You're gonna get some loose setting powder. Get any powder you like. You're gonna grab either a sponge or a brush, tap the excess off, and lightly over that primer, you're going to tap it on your face. This is creating a thin barrier where the oils and the sweat is gonna have to kind of work more to get out. <laughs> and really mess up the makeup, you know? Putting a very thin layer will work because if you put too much powder, it's gonna crumble and then you're gonna have crumbly foundation and your mate have to just start over. So you see, it kind of gives us already a mattified look. This definitely helps to provide that longevity look and feel, especially the center where we get pores, where we sweat the most, or here at the end of the face where our sweat could drip down, you know? You always wanna shake your foundation, make sure it, all the ingredients is mixed, are mixed in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two pumps each. That's kind of a lot, but my bad. You guys always see me apply my foundation with my hand. I know some people don't like it, this provides a thin and even way of applying your makeup. When you apply it like this, look at this. As opposed to if you just get your brush, dab it on, you're more likely going to get the majority of the product here on the top and you're going to just add it here and it's going to just take longer to blend. So if you do this, it's going to, at the end of the day, be most efficient. Or if you're like, whoa, I don't want to touch it, it's gross, get a flat brush like this. You guys see me use this all the time. It's from Smashbox. I really like how thin it is. This will create the same finger hand illusion and you see how it's applying nicely over that powder this application way too allows for the non cakiness once your skin starts to warm up because it's applied sort of evenly you will get more of an even sort of warmth onto the skin when your skin gets hot eventually things get hot like your hair starts getting oily you start sweating so the way you do things is going to help it kind of lasts longer, but also things are gonna melt off. It could kind of melt off evenly. It's not, but you know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to say. I like to get a brush or a sponge. It really depends my mood. If I were to pick, a brush is my favorite way because now I'm just doing is tapping this foundation in. This is our blending. Our finger was placing, this is the blending. This is what's gonna make it look super smooth and super blurred. And then what I like to do is just tap. I'm not going like this, I'm just tapping tapping on right here we already have our base going depending on the foundation it depends on like what works better some foundations work better with a sponge most foundation i feel like equally work well with a brush and i like to use a dense brush like this nothing too flimsy like if you tap it like this it's not gonna crumble up and you always want your foundation brush to be clean 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 because if it's not clean you're putting already gunk that's been there onto your skin and that also creates a cakey look we're here trying to get a smooth thin layer of makeup it's not all about the actual liquid foundation it's about everything the powders the cream product and it's not just one thing another thing you want to tap a good amount like you want to make sure everything's nice and blended out you can just start with one side go to the other side maybe count to 10 go in the middle to 10 to 10 and then like pretty much you're done with the blend you guys know you guys know i'm gonna let this dry down i know a lot of times we don't have five minutes to let it dry down 10 minutes but give it at least a minute or two in the meantime you can start with your concealer you can brew your coffee you can do like other things around the house maybe get the load of laundry really quick throw it on the bed or something and then come back and that way too like when you're doing something in between it make you feel like you're productive like Usually I'll go make my coffee. It's been like five minutes. Next step is cream product. I used to think cream product. I'm still in vacation mode. I used to think that cream product weren't necessary. And then I started using them and then they were. I love to do is add my cream products before my concealer. Because I have a small face, things tend to get out of control in three seconds. Talking about my small face, I like to use smaller brushes. Something like this, something 
something dense. Dense means something like compacted. Compacted here and that is not flimsy. I mean, this is flimsy because it's soft, but if you just tap here, it's not gonna go like that. If it taps, it stays put. This brush does that. Those types of brushes avoid streaks. It allows you to have a blurred look without being streaky. So the streaks can go away because you can fix them. That's an extra step that most of the time we don't have time for, you know? Any cream bronzer you have, this one is the <laughs> most pigmented ever. And I just really like it. It's 20 bucks at Sephora. I like to add my cream product here, the side, the side, here, here as in like the top of my ear, maybe on my nose a little bit, and that's it. And then we're gonna wanna go in with a blush. This blush is by far the most pigmented blush you will ever buy. Literally, literally, I love it so much. Something close to a dupe, not exactly the same, but something just as pigmented as this and it gives you like the one-two punch. It's gonna be this right here. Oh, and it's actually this shade too. It's Hot Shot from LA Girl and then this one Grateful from Rare Beauty. Like this is more creamy, this is more liquid. You know, you wanna do a little one-two action. Literally, that's it, that's it. We can use this side of the brush to blend the contour and then the other side for the, the blush. I like to keep them separate just because it doesn't really get too, it won't get muddy. You see how this is blending? You don't need a lot, you just need a little bit of bronzer because that's going to help all the other products really just last longer and withstand all that sweat. And here, I'm just literally tapping. Again, you don't wanna go all like that because you don't wanna Move this foundation, this primer, this whole process you've done. And what a bronzer is, if you're not familiar, it just gives the skin a little bit of warmth. You see how my skin was looking super flat? Just one dimension, like we need a little bit of color. It's slight, but enough. And then the nose, you can just again tap. This is very, very blendable. It's super creamy. A little goes a long way. So this stick, you'll have it for 300 years. Can we like that? We like makeup that will last. You see, it just blends like butter. You can always clean off a brush. Any napkin, I always have like a makeup napkin here and this side's not too, there's not too much product. Oh my God, this is dry down. And then you just blend here. Okay, you see? We got some things going on, right? I have dark under eyes. There are purples and reds. Someone recently said, hey, I just see that there's brown. No, my skin is brown. These, like if you really look, they are purples and they're red and they're a little bit of pink. Got a lot going on. So yellow is gonna cover that. It's gonna cancel that completely out. So I'm just gonna go pale, 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 like that. And again, I'm gonna let this dry down a little bit. I like to use a sponge when it comes to color correcting so we get just a thin layer and this also will tone down the cream blush if in case you put too much that's why i always like to do concealer after this is all more of a full coverage foundation look too because this is gonna be weird and like you're gonna be like ill when you sweat it's gonna break makeup apart if you're wearing like a skin tint because skin tints are super thin it most likely will just completely wipe away when you are working with thicker layers and things that are layered on your sweat is most likely not going to break that down that's kind of why a full coverage really helps you want to do the lightweight version with the skin tint that will work but i would just suggest for it to be you know like a quick maybe a pool day it'll be like four or five hours but if you're like going to work or you walk to work or you take the bus that's what i wanted to say i'm like I, i'm forgetting something that was like top of mind a concealer i really like that works it's long come i love the nars the whole Holy Grail, that's the one I wanna use today, but I don't have it. Smashbox has a new Halo one, I like that. The Armani one, that's a good one too. A drugstore, the Can't Stop, Won't Stop concealer. The NYX Serum concealer. So let's use Long Come. This is like an oldie but goodie. This concealer dries down pretty fast. And this, you can just add here in the center of the face to bring a little brightness back to the skin. We added the cream products. When it comes to concealer, I like to go with the brush just like my foundation. It gives you that full coverage, that full pigment, that blurred look, tapping motions like this. I put concealer here and like in the mouth area because I do have darkness there. I can color correct. I just put more concealer in that those areas. This concealer tends to dry down, so make sure the products you use, you know if they dry down, if they don't, if they're hydrating. Hold on, when you have too much product on 
on the brush, you clean it off, and you continue. You just don't want to be stuck blending something that dried down completely matte and you're like, oh my God, that also delays the process, you know? The products I'm using, I do like them. They work great. You do not have to use what I use. And then with the sponge, I just kind of go over it a little bit. And then at this point, we check. How are we looking? Do we need more blending? And at the moment, it doesn't look like we are. We're good. Am I looking patchy? You know, sometimes things patch up a little bit. You can always go back. You're like, wait, you know, the concealer kind of lightened it up. You don't have to. I didn't have to do this, but just as an example, if I was doing my makeup regularly, I probably wouldn't have gone over. I just like to demonstrate, you know, different sort of scenarios scenarios for you to learn. You guys know I wanted to be a teacher. That's one of the reasons why I started YouTube because I wanted to teach. I'm like, I think YouTube's a good place where you could teach. I always felt like I was a good teacher because I learned super slow. Like it takes me a long time to learn things. So I'm like, I can teach that because when it takes you a long time to learn, I feel like you can really express how a lot of people may not be used to, you know? Whoa! I love Charlotte Tilbury, but if you want a close dupe, use this one. This is four bucks. This is like 25. This, med this is a mini one. We're in the nitty gritty part of things. What I like to always do is prep my powder puff. Hold on, I have an itch. These powder puffs are from Amazon. Lately, I've been coming back to these than my e.l.f. ones. They're both really good, but just like that they're smaller and they fit better onto my small face. And what I do is I just wash them with soap and water after I use them the one time, let it dry, and you can continue using it. So I'm going to get my powder here. Press it in, right? I always like to set my under eyes first. Honestly, it's just habit. There's no rhyme or reason. I don't know, I just do it. So I'm gonna look up, press. Just like we pressed in with our makeup brush, you know, we're tapping. You wanna press in powder. That way it's locking things in. I like to go in with a loose setting powder, my Maybelline one, and I like to bake a little bit. Just my under eyes. I'm just gonna bake like this. And then setting powders, this is crucial. This is the crucial step. We have our creams laid flat, laid well, laid evenly, we're good to go. We want a setting powder that is going to last the test of time. There are so many setting powders out here, like so, so many. I've done setting powder videos, the ones I really, really like, and I'm going to do the pink powder video. Actually, I'm gonna film that today, so I will have that up very soon. What a setting powder does, it's literally what's in the name, it's going to set your makeup down. The difference from a foundation powder is that foundation powder, typically it's pressed and it will provide more coverage for you. If you want that, we could do that. I like the lightweightness of a setting powder. I think that light, feathery look and feel it gives the skin. I just love that blur it looks. Foundation powders can do that. We're trying to lock this down so it doesn't move, especially if you have oily skin. Well, I'm gonna use the one size powder. I really like this powder, the pink one. So I like to always place it on the actual cap. A powder that's good too, it will be finely milled. And what finely milled means to me is if it literally looks like baking powder. If it sticks onto your finger, it's a good powder like this. It's not all stuck, but you see how a good amount is stuck on there? That means it's finely milled, that it will blur the skin, it will set your skin perfectly. I like to always go with my foundation brush, kind of go over, you know, little areas that may have kind of maybe moved, powder puff, even this out like this. So when you apply this powder, it goes on evenly to your skin. I like to go like this to get my smile line. You're gonna want to press. That's the name of the game. That's the name of the game. We are pressing powder in, making sure we're locked in. If you have dry skin, don't use so much powder. Just maybe use it for your T-zone or maybe use one dip, press it, and that entire dip will cover your face. I use more than that because I do know I require a little bit more. If you have dry skin, you don't want to look dry and you don't want to look cakey and you know have those dry flakes that can happen. So you also want to be aware about that. So if you wear a foundation, a hydrating foundation, it will help you not look super, super dry as opposed to using like a matte foundation, you know? And as I'm setting, I'm pressing 
this powder in my under eyes. I used to do it with the sponge, but I do find using the same powder puff and pressing, it takes a little more time than the sponge. It's like that flawlessness that will last all day long. And you see the cream products now look a little more on the subtle side. You wanna maybe feel your face. I feel like I'm a little, you know, wet here, a little hydrating. Come on, just set, make sure. Lashes I've been loving. Armani's subtle though, it's not that pigmented. And I would suggest for a sweat proof makeup, get something pigmented, something that's gonna pow. These L'Oreal blushes are legit. I just bought a new one. I bought the pink one. Dior, this one's pigmented. Al Slabs is a good one. Jason Wu are good, good pigmented blushes. The blush I wanna use today is this one. I'm going to get a brush, any sort of brush. And you're just gonna tap over the cream blush you have. And you already have the bit of the blueprint, so you just follow that area there. You're just gonna tap. You know I get crazy with blush. I'm hoping today is not that day. You can always just tap, tap, tap. And then you can turn the blush, brush, and then start blending. This way you have more of a seamless look. Now we can go in with our bronzer. I really love this L'Oreal bronzer. It's been like a holy grail since it released. I'm getting a denser brush. I'm gonna tap the excess off. I have this working with. It's going to apply evenly. You can do this before the blush or after. I typically do it before the blush, but I forgot to do that today. We're following what the bronzer already kind of gave us, the cream bronzer. Depending how intense you want it, it depends how much you add on, how much you continue to blend. If it works for you, do it. There isn't any rules. I just, again, want to teach you more techniques and reasonings why I do what I do. If I forget, when it comes to bronzer, I like to keep it like this. This is sort of my area. This is like the line I try to keep that I don't go over. Cause sometimes my blush can be way up here and it just looks like it takes over my face. Well, it does because my face is so small, you know? Oh, you know we're doing a wear test. We should have been started at the clock. Let's do like, let's start, we started at nine. Yeah, I'll come back at seven or maybe like 6.30, like right when the sun is hitting. Our bronzer, you can squeeze your brush and I'm just going to, again, tap. Tapping takes longer but it gives you that pigment and you can control the product when you tap it you can tap it and then blend but the product's already placed you see what i'm saying if you really want to hone in like get some full pigment we can get a foundation powder any foundation powder will work fenty's a good one this one's a good one maybelline superstay l'oreal's nyx estee lauder's a good one anyone you have you're gonna get a brush i like to use brushes and then we can just start going around this blush this also will help help if your blush got out of control your bronzer got out of control you can just diffuse everything and i'm just doing again tapping motions it's like double setting so we set first with the one size then this one we set with the powder and then the blush and the bronzer so this is locked and loaded, right? Okay, okay. I'm like, wait, do I have a patch here? Sometimes patches happen, just you could be a little bit too rough. Maybe the product underneath is too wet. A lot of things happen while you get patches. You see there's like a mini patch there. You can lightly just tap over it. I'm obsessed with not having a patch. You guys know that already. So now to clean things up, today actually doesn't look messy. You can always cut the cheeks from your mouth to your ear. You see that? Your mouth to your ear, your temple, like underneath your eye. You could go like this to get any sort of crevice. This is an optional step. You don't have to do it. I always do it. I personally just like doing it. I think it makes the makeup look just neater, a little cleaner. I'm going to now just tap it. You don't have to let it sit too long. Tapping this. Anytime you're tapping powder, that means you're just locking it in. It's locked in, it's not moving. Some people say setting sprays are needed. Some people say they're not. I believe a setting spray is needed, very much so. Because it allows to lock in your makeup. I don't really add too much, but I add enough. I'm gonna go a little further. I'm using Charlotte Tilbury. This is my fan from Amazon. Let me add a lip, finish up the eyes really quick, then we'll resume. Peinadita y todo. 
Okay, you guys, my lip combo is this one right here. It is bold and lively. I matched it with the blush because I don't know, I feel like warmth is coming through already. I did not put anything hydrating. I didn't put any highlight on. You can add highlights on your skin anytime you want. I just personally feel like in the summertime, my skin warms up so fast. Look, already an hour and a half in, I already have a natural glow going. So I wanted to show you how the skin looks obviously no filters no nothing this is my bare skin girl looks good under eyes looking bomb this eye look will be on youtube shorts very soon i don't know if today or maybe tomorrow she ain't moving this ain't moving you know what let me go in front of the window now so you guys can see in different lighting so okay bye all right, familia, look at my tan. She's thriving here. Whoo! Okay, look, you see the skin? Looks good, looks good. Girl, everything is put. I like its full coverage, but it doesn't look too much, like you're doing too much, you know, at least not for me. But I just wanna show you in daylight, all up in my pores. Looking good, I love it. Amelia, I'm back, I'm back. It's about 6.30, so it's been about 10 hours. Look how beautiful the skin looks. Oily, you know, a little bit. I did take a walk at around two o'clock. I wanna show you quick footage, and I was sweating. I was really sweating, but I didn't want to tap my skin or anything, just so you can see how the skin looks. It gets very hydrating, but nothing separated. Here we are, 10 hours later, oily, a little bit. You can see, sorry, by my screen in my window. You can see the skin looks really good. When you're sweating, or if you're sweating and you're like, wait, I need to do something, grab the sponge or maybe the brush you use. I would suggest the sponge you used earlier that day. You're going to tap your face. This is how you're gonna stay fresh all day. Especially because when it's hot, you'll have to do this a few times a day, depending how much you sweat and how much you're out and about. You're gonna get your setting spray. Have both of these with you and then you're just going to do this motion and you see it looks so good refreshed you don't have to do anything you don't have to powder up you don't have to do anything here we are and most importantly we do not look gastadas 